first at nine. This is Other There and Now, 24 7. In tonight's headlines, Foreign Minister says that government prepares to close diplomatic missions when necessary. Chinese Embassy refutes CBK claims. Government announces maximum retail price for rice. And Sri Lankan women cricketers face World Cup qualifier challenge. Good evening, it's Monday the 6th of February 2017. Welcome to News Tonight on Other Than 24-7. And thank you for making us a part of your evening. I'm Mahesh Johnny. Let's begin with the local news. President Maitripala Sirisena says the current government is committed to direct the children towards achievement they expect by connecting them with the new world of technology. The president was speaking at the annual prize-giving ceremony of the Prince of Wales College in Morotua today. President Maitripala Sirisena was joined by Minister of Education Akila Biraj Karyavasam, Ports and Shipping Minister Arjuna Ranatunga and Deputy Minister of Public Enterprise Development Iran Vikramaratna. Previous governments worked towards strengthening the free education system. The present government's biggest responsibility is to continue the duty by providing physical resources and human resources. We want to connect children to the world of new technology and direct them towards greater achievements. A country develops as a result of an educated population. A country which has a large learned population is one that is capable of achieving rapid development. The Presidential Commission of Inquiry appointed to probe the controversial central bank treasury bond issue commenced its duties today at the Justice Ministry. President Maitripala Sirisena recently advised the Attorney General to appoint a Commission of Inquiry to investigate allegations of malpractice in the issuance of central bank treasury bonds during the period from February 1, 2015 to March 31, 2016. President Sirisena instructed the Attorney General to take further legal action. Accordingly, Supreme Court Justices K.T. Chitrasiri and Prasanna Sujiva Jawadana and former Deputy Auditor General K. Kandasami Velupille were appointed to the Tri-Member Commission. The President instructed the Commission to complete the report with recommendations within a period of three months. The Commission engaged in preliminary discussions when they gathered at the Justice Ministry premises today. According to the other Derana reporter, the Attorney General had also been present at the discussion which focused on the future course of action. Future discussions will be open to media. The leader of the Pivithuru Hela Urumea parliamentarian Uday Gaman Pillar requests the Sri Lanka Medical Council to appeal to the Supreme Court against the recent ruling on the South Asian Institute of Technology and Medicine in Malambe. He made this statement addressing a media briefing in Colombo today. This is a court of appeal ruling given to Saitam. There are five major defects that I found after studying the judgment. First, is this institute approved by the Medical Council? No. Is this institute approved by the University Grants Commission? No. Secondly, neither the court nor the Medical Council is responsible for providing those who enroll in such institutions the opportunity to practice as a doctor. Thirdly, the Court of Appeal neglected the fact that the approval of the University Grants Commission is expired. Although CITEM offers medical degrees, no one has the legal right to register with the Medical Council and practice as a doctor. Then the Medical Council is the only institute that has specialized technical knowledge to accept a medical degree. Finally, the judgment states that the Medical Council is only capable of making a recommendation of whether or not to approve a medical institute and that the final decision is taken by the minister. This is wrong. A minister is a normal person. He does not have medical knowledge. Well, the present minister at least knows about teeth. Speaking further, Gamman Pillar expressed views about escalating incidents of violent activities in the north of Sri Lanka. We kept emphasizing that the tigers are rising again in the north. The state intelligence service has informed the government in writing that this is true. We urge the government to immediately stop removing army camps from the north. 
In one of our headline stories, Minister of Foreign Affairs Mangala Samarawira says that the government is prepared to close Sri Lanka foreign missions abroad if they fail to fulfill their duties. He made these comments during an event held in Colombo today. The new premises of the Consular Affairs Division of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs was ceremonially declared open by Minister Mangala Samaravira. The division, previously located at Sir Baran Jayatilakamawatha in Fort, was relocated to the second floor of the Salinko building in Janadipati Mawatha, Colombo 1. The Foreign Minister also launched a state-of-the-art electronic document attesting system that will reduce processing time with biometric authentication linked in real time with Sri Lankan missions and consulates abroad as well as other government institutions. An online system for appointment and payments will also be in place at the new premises. With the implementation of document attesting system, processing time is expected to reduce from two days to just 15 minutes. To ensure uninterrupted service to the public, consular services will continue to be extended at the previous location until further notice. We are preparing to make changes within the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. We are looking into a program that focuses on streamlining activities with the Sri Lankan missions. The government is prepared to close embassies that do not accomplish their required tasks. We also plan on opening new embassies in countries where the necessity lies. There are many other countries that do not have a Sri Lankan ambassador. So instead of opening new diplomatic missions in these countries, we are planning to introduce the concept of non-resident ambassadors for which the cabinet approval was granted recently. Gampa District SLFB organizer Pradeep Jawardhana and Professor Rajiva Vijay Singh says the Sri Lankan government has a window of positive opportunities to reverse the UN Human Rights Resolution on war crimes against the country. Speaking to other Daruna, they express their views regarding the new US administration and opportunities for Sri Lanka. Earlier, Director General of the Institute of National Security Studies, Asanga Abegunosekara, and former diplomat Diane Jayatilaka expressed views regarding the replacement of key U.S. State Department officials and new developments arising from U.S. President Donald Trump's decisions. Among state positions that Trump replaced over the first two weeks in his presidency are officials who were heavily involved in Sri Lankan affairs. The Trump administration removed U.S. Assistant Secretary of State for South and Central Asian Affairs Nisha Biswal, U.S. Permanent Representative to the U.N. Ambassador Samantha Powell, Assistant Secretary of State for Democracy, Human Rights and Labor Tom Malinowski, and U.S. National Security Advisor Susan Rice. They played a pivotal role in resolutions proposed by the USA at the UNHRC concerning alleged war crimes and human rights violations in Sri Lanka during the final stage of conflict. The appointment of Rex Tillerson was to get things moving as well as a sort of a stagnation that they have seen. And on certain decisions that was taken during Obama's time was very unfavorable to many countries, including Sri Lanka. There would be better, I think, uh, opportunity towards Asia. We would sort of look into Asian countries much more. And the pivot of Asia uh, of Obama would definitely change and um, if even a country like Sri Lanka I would see uh, they could benefit from this uh, whole equation. I think uh, it will turn towards a positive side than the Obama administration and uh, probably he could see South Asia and South Asian uh, country like Sri Lanka uh, not through a, a regional leader but directly. Lanka there is an opportunity for Sri Lanka. There are two special envoys that President Sir Sena can use. One is the grandson of President J.R. Jayawardena, Pradeep Jayawardena, who has close relations with the Trump's Republican Party members. The other one is Professor Rajiva Vijay Singh, who is a classmate and a friend of British Prime Minister Theresa May. <laughs> Meanwhile, responding to Diane Jayatilaka's statement, Professor Rajiva Vijay Singh says he is willing to represent Sri Lanka at discussions with U.S. officials regarding the Geneva Resolution. Professor Vijay Singh said he will do so if extended an invitation by the government. Gampaha District SLFP organizer and the grandson of former President J.R. Jawadana, Pradeep Jawadana, says that the Sri Lankan government should make inroads to reach the Trump administration and must build healthy relationships with U.S. congressmen, senators and political leaders in order to influence the Trump administration to reverse the UN Human Rights Resolution on Sri Lanka. 
Well, we have some news uh, just in. Well, two gunmen have shot the vehicle of the CEO of Saitam, Dr. Samir Sena Ratna, while he was driving from the Dr. Neville Fernando Hospital just a short while ago. Uh, Dr. Samir Sena Ratna confirmed to other Derana that he is unhurt in, from the shooting. Now, two gunmen in full face helmets had been spotted at the time of the shooting. That news story once again. Uh, two gunmen have shot uh, the vehicle of the CEO of Saitam, Dr. Samir Sena Ratna while he was driving from the Dr. Neville Fernando Hospital just a short while ago. Now, Dr. Samir Sena Ratna confirmed to Adha Derana that he is unheard and he is well. Well, the two gun there have been two uh, gunmen with full face helmet being spotted at the time of the shooting. We will follow this story and bring you the very latest. Well, with the Right to Information Act comments into force, government today appointed officers to the act. Director of Media and Public Relations M.G. Jatisa has been appointed as the information officer. The public can uh, contact the public relations officer via 11 513953 That number once again, 11 513953 Director General of Government Information Dr. Ranga Kalansuria was appointed as the Appeal Officer of the Department of Government Information. The public can contact the Appeal Officer via 11 251 -2751. That number once again, 11 -251 -2751. In business news, a government announces a maximum retail price for two rice varieties with effect from midnight today. Addressing Media Minister of Special Assignments, Dr. Sarath Amunugam announced that the maximum retail price for a kilogram of samba rice will be 80 rupees, while the maximum retail price for Nadu will be 70 rupees per kilo. Soon after the Cost of Living Committee convened for discussion today, Minister of Special Assignments, Dr. Sarath Amunugam addressed media. We had a discussion today with private sector traders who import rice because there is general criticism that retail prices for rice are quite high. The President and Prime Minister took decisions regarding this. However, there are problems when implementing their directives. Therefore, after discussions today, we decided to impose a maximum retail price for Nadu and Samba with effective from midnight tonight. If retail traders do not adhere to these prices, we have decided to initiate strict legal measures against them. Under the stock market now, stocks were lower after the close today as losses in the services, plantations and power and energy sectors led shares lower. At the close in Colombo, the CSE all share declined 0.84% to hit a new six-month low. We have Imeshi Fernando from the Colombo Stock Exchange for more details from the trading flow. The benchmark all share price index lost 51.68 points to close at 6,068.31, while the SP Sri Lanka 20 index lost 39.81 points to close at 3,466.32. The turnover was 393.83 million rupees, with 22.04 million shares changing hands in 3,063 trades. The market capitalization at the end of the day was 2,675.28 billion rupees. Top 5 gainers of the day were Bearwell Resorts, Swarnamahal Financial Services, Agstar, United Motors and Guardian Capital Partners. While the top 5 losers were Amana Takaful, Serendip Hotels Non-Voting, Alufab, Malvata Valley Plantations Non-Voting and Horan Plantations. Today's foreign purchases were 305.62 million rupees and foreign sales were 64.32 million rupees. There were three crossings and the crossings turnover was 93.23 million rupees. Well, here's Dimantha Matthews from First Capital Holdings with a forecast as to how the stock market will perform in the next few days. Investors are likely to continue to be on a wait and see approach as interest rates uh, continue to slide upwards. Most investors want to see how tomorrow's policy announcement is going to be before taking any investment decisions. Uh, selected investors, however, are looking at uh, bargain hunting stocks as uh, they fall to attractive levels. However, most investors may continue to watch the liquid blue chip counters when investing. 
Also in business news, the Sri Lankan rupee fell today due to dollar demand from importers and banks as foreign investors continued to sell government securities. Rupee forwards were active with two weeks forwards trading at 151 uh, rupees and 22 to 25 cents compared with Friday's close of 151 rupees and 15 to 20 cents. Let's now take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other currencies. On Sports Tonight, for the first time, women's cricket World Cup qualifier matches will be held in Sri Lanka. Starting tomorrow, the 2017 ICC Women's Cricket World Cup qualifier tournament will be held at four locations in Colombo. Sri Lanka Cricket organized a media briefing in Colombo today regarding the matches. The ICC Women's World Cup qualifier brings 10 countries together in their quest to claim the four remaining places in the 2017 ICC Women's World Cup that will be played in England from June 24th to July 23rd. Sri Lanka, India, Pakistan, South Africa, Ireland, Bangladesh, Zimbabwe, Thailand, Scotland and Papua New Guinea will all battle it out to make it into the Super 6 stage. The sides finishing in the top four will join defending champion Australia, host England, former winner New Zealand and the reigning ICC Women's World T20 champions, West Indies. I believe this tournament will be crucial for us as we look forward to enter the World Cup. Our team has worked hard and done everything necessary to face this tournament. The tournament is equally important for all teams and look forward to a good challenge. The team is in good form to face this challenge. I wish luck to all participating teams. We have played the qualifiers before and the last time we played we qualified for the finals and we were not able to finish uh, the final well. So that would be our uh, next target for this uh, qualifiers. This tournament is very important. I'm sure everybody are aware that we've got few injuries in the side. This also gives an opportunity for the young, uh, young talent in our side who've just come in for the qualifiers to see how they progress. The Women's World Cup qualifiers will be held until the 21st of this month. Well, before we move on to international stories, we want to bring you one of the stories we've been following up until right now. The Chinese embassy today refuted claims by former President Chandrika Bandar Naika Kumar Thunga regarding the awarding of the Norocholi project to a Chinese company. As the Chinese ambassador told me, Mahinda Rajapaksa had taken a commission from the Norocholi project, which I signed earlier for 280 million US dollars. Mahinda Rajapaksa had said he wanted 50% of it. He tried to bribe police officers as well, and maybe he succeeded in that. These are the challenges we face now. I'm talking about just one project here. Friends, these things are happening. Well, when contacted, a spokesperson uh, from the Chinese embassy clarified uh, that the ambassador had not made such a statement. A spokesperson went on to say that the former president had made baseless claims without any facts. Let's now move on to international news. In World Tonight, Sasikala Natarajan is set to become the third woman chief minister for India's southern state of Tamil Nadu. The ruling party of Tamil Nadu, the All India Anna Dravida Munnetram Kalaham, elected its general secretary Sasikala as a legislative party leader two months after the demise of her mentor J. Jayalalitha. Sasikala Natarajan, also fondly called Chinnamma, was unanimously elected as All India Anna Dravida Munnetra Kalham party leader by legislators in a party meeting in Chennai. Now, decks are cleared for Sasikala, a close aide of former Chief Minister Jayalalitha Jairam, to replace O Panir Selvam as the state chief. According to media reports, Panir Selvam had tendered his resignation on Sunday. After being appointed the leader, Sasikala said, quote, Following the demise of Honorable Amma, it was Thiru Opanir Selvam who urged me to first take charge as the General Secretary of AIA DMK. It was Panir Selvam who insisted that I become the Chief Minister of the State. 
Panir Selvam, a cabinet colleague who stood in for Jai Lalita in the past, was sworn in as the state chief immediately after her death. The provincial opposition, Dravida Munyatra Kalham, said the election of Sasikala was immoral because she never held any post in the government or party. Heavy snow and avalanches have killed more than 100 people in the Afghanistan and Pakistan countries. Rescuers continue to experience difficulties reaching trapped people because of bad weather and snow blocked roads. In the deadliest incident, 53 people died in one village after an avalanche in Nuristan, a northeastern Afghan province on the Pakistan border. 13 people were also killed in an avalanche in northeastern Pakistan, nine of them in the town of Chitral. Dozens of houses have been destroyed and people were reported to have frozen to death trapped in cars. There were also avalanches to north of Afghan capital Kabul. The main international airport in Kabul has been closed due to snow and ice on the runway. Officials are warning of more avalanches as snowstorms are continuing. Also in international news, Wikileaks founder Julian Assange has made a fresh plea to the UK and Swedish authorities to restore his liberty. He has been living inside the Ecuadorian embassy in London for more than four years because he fears he will be extradited to the United States. Wikileaks founder Julian Assange, who has been questioned about a sex allegation in Sweden, spoke out a year after a UN legal panel ruled he should be allowed to walk free. In February last year, the UN's Working Group on Arbitrary Detention found he was being arbitrarily detained by the UK and Sweden. Assange said a year on, the two governments had failed to comply with the ruling. He said, quote, I call on the UK and Sweden to do the right thing and to restore my liberty. These two states signed treaties to recognize the UN and its human rights mechanisms, unquote. Wikileaks founder has been living in the embassy since 19th of June 2012. He sought asylum after a Supreme Court rejected his appeal against being extradited to Sweden to face sex assault allegations. Assange has refused to travel to Sweden for questioning because he fears he will then be handed over to the US over WikiLeaks' release of 500,000 secret military files. U.S. President Donald Trump ramped up his criticism of a federal judge who blocked a travel ban on seven mainly Muslim nations and said courts were making U.S. border security harder, intensifying the first major legal battle of his presidency. In a series of tweets that broaden his attacks on the country's judiciary, Trump said that Americans should blame U.S. District Judge James Robarth and the court system if anything happens. Him, Do you? U.S. President Donald Trump did not elaborate on what threats the country potentially faced. Trump had told the Department of Homeland Security to check people coming into our country very carefully. The courts are making the job very difficult. The Republican president labeled James Robart a so-called judge a day after the Seattle jurist issued a temporary restraining order that prevented enforcement of a 90-day ban on citizens from Iran, Iraq, Libya, Somalia, Sudan, Syria and Yemen, and a 120-day bar on all refugees. It is unusual for a sitting president to attack a member of the judiciary, which the US Constitution designates as a check on the power of the executive branch and Congress. Here's your weather now. Ground frost can be expected at some places in the Nuwara Elia district in the early hours of the morning. Mainly dry weather with colder nights and mornings is expected to continue over most parts of the island. Misty conditions can be expected at some places in the western, Sabaragamua, central and southern provinces during the morning hours. Here is your city by city forecast.
Well, that is a part of your world tonight here on Other Dirana 24-7. For the very latest in local, international, base, sports and weather, do log on to www.otherdirana.lk. You can also like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. I'm Mahish Johnny. Good night. Bringing you the news and information 24 hours a day. This is Sri Lanka's premier news channel, Other Dirana 24-7.